This video is for Stage 7, Informative Explanatory Writing, with a focus on sequencing the details. Stage 7 is a crossover stage, and what I mean by crossover is that you will see Stage 7 writing in my 2-3 writing manual, as well as my grades 4-6 through 6 writing manual. And the reason for this is because it's an advanced paragraph or it could be several paragraphs, many paragraphs that are connected together. Hence, the crossover is because students who are at second and third grade would be writing paragraphs as well as students who are in fourth through sixth grade. But the time of year may be different when they're actually heading into this stage seven, meaning second and third graders late in the school year as a matter of fact, maybe just third graders late in their school year may be hitting this stage seven, while fourth through sixth grade at the beginning of their school year may begin with a stage seven as a review in paragraph writing and then head on to multiple paragraphs after that. Let's review our informative explanatory organizers so we can get the big picture of all the different text structures students have to learn, and then we will begin with our sequencing at stage seven. If you are in the second and third grade manual, please go to page 118. If you are in the fourth through sixth grade manual, please go to page 114. On this page, you will find my three organizers, categories, description, and sequence. The categories and the sequence will be used at stage seven, and the description will be used at stage eight. These organizers were used previously in earlier stages as well, but the difference now as we head up into stage seven and then the description in stage eight, all three of these organizers will be adding a hook so let's put a hook at the beginning of every one of these organizers and end with snappy endings. We'll put our little snappy ending. This means that now that we're at stage seven and eventually stage eight for the description, the students will include hooks and snappy endings to their paragraphs, not just topic sentence details and conclusions. The reason why categories and sequence are in stage seven is because they both have SS light bulb for their topic sentences and S light bulb for their conclusion. Notice the description has a different topic sentence and conclusion. So it's been given its own separate teaching and we'll put that in stage eight. All three of these though will have hooks and snappy endings, meaning that we're adding more to the student's writing when they head up into these stages. If you look at the opposite page, you will notice the remaining three organizers. There's a total of six organizers within the informative explanatory writing section. The cause and effect, compare and contrast, those are your remaining three. That's once you master the first three, then you start working on mastering these last. If you are in the 4-6 manual, you will actually be hitting these where the students will eventually independently use these organizers at stage 11. If you're in second and third grade, these organizers are still going to be used, but with teacher's assistance in something we call thinking notes. It's very important that in second and third grade, your students still have exposure and use these organizers so they learn how to think at these deep levels and how to organize their thinking in this manner, which will eventually not only teach them how to think and organize their thoughts so they can use cause and effect, compare, contrast, but also eventually bridge that to their writing. We have all six of our organizers. We are focusing on these first three so that students can master them and eventually build on the last remaining three once these are mastered. The lesson I'm about to show you will be a stage seven using the sequence organizer. Let's get started. If you are in the two, three writing manual, you will begin on page 182. 
If you are in the 4-6 writing manual, you will begin on page 156. To begin this stage 7, let's walk through all the pages in this section. The first page is our chant. That's where we're going to introduce stage 7 so that your students know exactly what they're going to do in your writing lesson. This is a perfect way for you to introduce this lesson to your students. The following page is the teacher at a glance writing steps. These are for you, the teacher, to follow along as you're teaching the lesson. The next page is a sample brainstorm from a unit of study about oceanography with a focus on dolphins, in which the students brainstormed everything they knew about dolphins. Whenever we're writing, we typically want to start with this brainstorm process, organize all of our ideas, so then we can choose whatever we want to write about from our brainstorm and take it to our graphic organizer. In this demonstration lesson, we will use this brainstorm to begin our writing process. On the following page, you will see a colorful chart that you can mount in your classroom for your students to follow as they're learning stage seven writing. Why is this important for them to see the steps? Because once they master these metacognitive steps, they can write any type of information they need to at a stage seven level. These steps are really what you're focusing on when you're teaching this lesson. And it's very important that when you are first introducing this stage or any of the stages, that you have all the students together with you walking through the steps using the same brainstorm and then walking through the steps to make the same organizer so that you can teach this particular stage. So when you're finished, all your papers will look similar but the focus was learning these steps. As you repeat these lessons over and over with new information, the students will eventually learn these steps and you will have them use them to write their own information. So imagine as the year begins, the finished product, what students finish writing, will look very similar the whole class will have similar papers, but as the year progresses, you will start seeing students will have their own paragraphs that they've written because they will start with their own brainstorms and then follow the steps to write their own paragraphs. So our focus is to learn these steps so eventually they can brainstorm and write their own information. On the next page, you will see an organizer. You will see this organizer has the topic sentence, details, and conclusion. It doesn't have the hook and the snappy ending. That will be done separately. We will actually turn this sheet of paper over on the back side. So on the reverse side of your organizer, the students will plan their hook and their snappy ending. That is the last step of writing at a stage seven to plan your hook and snappy ending. I found that planning the hook and the snappy ending need to be done together after the entire organizer has been completed. And we do that on the reverse side. Why do we do that separately and at the end? Because then the students can have a hook and a snappy ending that are almost like a ribbon which the hook and the snappy ending are very similar to each other. So you're beginning and ending with something that's similar, as well as planning a hook that it will lead to that topic sentence. Sometimes children, when they begin writing with a hook, before they even write out their paragraph, they tend to put what the entire paragraph is about, the topic sentence and the hook, instead of just grabbing the reader's attention. So we will plan the hook and snappy ending after we finish our organizer. On the facing page are all the tools that you will need for this lesson. You will need to have your hand sign for sequencing as well as a visual of the graphic organizer. Remember, you can just use the flip book that's in your informative explanatory graphic organizer section of your manual. You would just flip to the hand sign page for sequencing and also the graphic organizers. So your students can see 
the hand signed, as well as the graphic organizer for that lesson. You have the organizer for the children to see. Next comes the details tools. These tools are for the students to start their details. Once they've recorded their ideas down, their ideas for their details, then they need to form the sentences. This tool will help them form their sentences for their details. Their little secret formula S light bulb is going to help them come up with a complete sentence about each detail. As they form those sentences from their ideas, then they will expand. So basically, they will draw or write keywords for each detail in the body of their organizer. Then we will use our start details to help take those ideas and form a complete sentence. And after we do that, we will take the expand details tool to decide, do we need to add more to these sentences? Do we need to describe, list, or back it up? And basically that means, in these sentences, do we need to add descriptive language? Does our reader need to visualize any of this information? List it. Do I need to tell more? Why? How? What else? When? Where? Do I need to add more information? Or back it up. Do I need an example? These are our tools for our details. As well as, right below that, are your transitions. These will be the transitions that you need for your detailed sentences also. So when you're planning your detailed sentences and you feel like you have a complete sentence, you've expanded on it, you may want to go back and decide, do I want to add a transition so that I can smoothly transition from one detailed sentence to the next? Here's all our tools for Stage 7, Informative Explanatory Sequence Writing. Let's turn to the next page. The next two pages are for the hook and the snappy ending. These are different ideas or ways that you can develop a hook or a snappy ending. Sometimes we'll use something called Author My Try, where we will actually take an author's hook from writing and we will then use that style to create our own hook. Or we will have sentence stems. Those are words that we can use to help us begin a hook. Again, over here for our snappy ending, you can see the same exact tools were used, but now to end the paragraph, an author, my try, or stem words. On the next page, what you will see is an example for the dolphin organizer, two different types of hooks with snappy endings that were developed. We will review these at the end of our organizer when we finish our lesson, but what I want to show you is notice this will be on the reverse side of your organizer. You'll turn your organizer over and on that blank side, you will draw a hook and a snappy ending so that you can plan the two together so they tend to begin and end your writing with a similar style or ideas. The last two pages in this section have the organizer, as well as a checklist of all the skills your students should have at this stage of writing, focusing on content and organization, sentences, and mechanics. You can use this checklist to go back, look at your students' writing to analyze what elements do they have in place and whatever's missing, that's where I need to go back and give them teaching points. It's the same with sentences. What should be in their sentences? What do they have in place? What additional instruction do I need to give my students in order to hone up these skills? And finally, mechanics as well. On this following page, we have our published piece of writing. After we've gone through our first draft, our revisions and editing, this is our final published piece of writing. Before I leave this published piece of writing, what I would like to point out is this. This particular organizer ended up having one, two, three different paragraphs. At this stage, you could be in one paragraph or you can separate out your hook and topic sentence. So this was our hook and our topic sentence. And then you could have a second paragraph which has all the details. And finally, our last paragraph, which had our conclusion, 
as well as the snappy ending. So in this same lesson, I had some kids who ended up having three paragraphs. They expanded more and told more about all the details. Well, there were also some children in the class that just remained at one paragraph. They didn't have as much, so we kept it at one paragraph. They just had very simple details in the middle. These are more sophisticated and expanded more, so we gave them their own paragraph for the middle details. This is a wonderful way for you to differentiate your students at this stage seven of writing. I wanted to show this example here to you. This organizer could be one paragraph or you could carry it on to three with your introduction body conclusion as separate paragraphs. This is how you differentiate later once your students master this paragraph level and they start independently writing on their own, you may be challenging some of your higher level students to expand and increase the number of sentences for details in the middle, making that a separate paragraph. Hence, as your students become more independent at stage seven, you can differentiate by having some just stay at the paragraph level and some moving up to writing three paragraphs, one for the introduction, one for the body, one for the conclusion. This is important because we want our students to eventually move from one paragraph to several paragraphs. This is a simple way to move to multiple paragraphs within this stage of writing. We've reviewed all these pages. Let's now begin our lesson. We're at stage seven. We're going to introduce this stage using our chant with our students. Boys and girls, we are going to write an advanced information paragraph with an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. Now remember, I had previously told you that sometimes the introduction, body, and conclusion can be their own paragraphs. Later, for those students that are advancing to the three paragraphs, you can go back and say to them, you now are going to have an introduction paragraph, a body paragraph, and a conclusion paragraph. But when you're first introducing this stage, you're just calling it an advanced paragraph. In the introduction, we don't want to bore our audience. It's not okay to do that. So what are we going to do? We're going to hook in the reader. Just like when you go fishing, what do you need to do? You need to hook in the fish with a nice juicy worm on that hook. So how do we do that? We're going to interest the reader in our paragraph by hooking them in with something interesting and juicy. Let's go back and try our paragraph again. Our advanced paragraph has an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. In the introduction, what are we gonna do? Hook in the reader, then introduce the topic sentence. That's what all the information is about. Body is full of details, details, details. That can be categorized, whole to part, or sequenced beginning, end, what happened in the middle. All these details need to tell about the big idea. Conclusion, repeat that topic sentence, but use different words and end it with a snap. That means end it with something that makes it matter. Make this information matter. Let's go back and say the whole thing. An advanced paragraph has an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. In the introduction, we hook in the reader, then introduce the topic sentence. That's what all the information is about. Body is full of details, details, details about that topic sentence. Those details can be categorized, whole to part, or sequenced, beginning, end, what happened in the middle. Conclusion. Repeat that big idea, but use different words and end it with a snap. We have all the parts of our paragraph. Let's now use this chant to help us walk through all the steps in writing an advanced paragraph. Please take out an eight and a half by 11 blank sheet of paper for us to follow our steps in order to write our informative explanatory stage seven organizer. You have your blank sheet of paper. Let's look at our brainstorm page before we begin our organizer to decide what will we be writing about. This brainstorm is from an entire oceanography unit of study in science. In this time period of the class, they had studied a lot of information about dolphins and they were ready to write many different paragraphs about dolphins. So 
We put a dolphin up on a big chart. We brainstormed all different information we knew about dolphins, put the information that was that belonged together in a category, and finally came up with big ideas about that information. We're ready to choose one of these to write about in our on our paragraph organizer. We're going to write the one down on the bottom about how a dolphin catches its prey. Once we review all the information that we're going to use to write about a dolphin, then we follow the steps to fill in our organizer. Draw a line across the top, draw a line across the bottom. We now have the three parts of our paragraph. The top section is the introduction, the middle section is the body, and the bottom is the conclusion. Let's fill in our organizer. Step one says, Topic sentence. We need to tell the big idea about our paragraph. You always do that. If I'm writing a paragraph, I need to start with my topic sentence. What in the world is all this information about? How do I do that? Because it's difficult. Well, we've learned from all of our previous stages, our secret formula is S, S, light bulb. That's our secret formula. It will have all the information we need to write about in this case, the dolphin and catching its prey. The first S is setting. Setting tells us time and place. The second S, pretend like we're opening up a book, subject, who or what is this information about? The light bulb is, what's the big idea and why is it so important? When we answer all this information, we'll have everything we need for a topic sentence to tell what the whole paragraph is about. I wanna caution you. In this case, we will need our setting. Sometimes you don't need the setting for every type of informative explanatory paragraph. So you have to make sure that when you use setting, it is needed. Let's begin. Once we have our SS light bulb labeled, we always go to the middle S. Subject, who or what is this information about? It's about dolphins. I could draw a dolphin or I could write dolphins. I think I'll write dolphins. Jump over to the big idea. I can't fill in my setting until I know the big idea. Once I know the big idea, then I can figure out if I need to let you know the setting or not. So what's the big idea? We're talking about how dolphins catch their prey, but really the big idea is how they have a special ability to catch their prey, because it's kind of a unique special ability. So we're going to put ability here. They have a special ability they use to do what? To catch their prey. Well. We could say prey, or what is it that they catch? Fish, shrimp, squid. These are pretty typical types of food that they eat. Let's go back and see if we can say this sentence so far. Let's make like a fin for a dolphin. Dolphins have a special ability to catch fish, shrimp, and squid. Ooh, dolphins have a unique ability to catch fish, shrimp, and squid. Excellent. Do I need a setting here? Sure, I think we could tell you. Every day, where do dolphins catch these shrimp, squid, and fish? Usually the shallow coastal regions. So I'm going to put all that information which we have learned about. Let's go back and see if we can say this topic sentence. Every day in coastal regions, dolphins use their special abilities. Ooh, use their special, dolphins use their special abilities. Let's change that to abilities, special abilities. Let's go back and say it now. So notice we're revising as we go through and say it. Every day near the coastal regions, dolphins use their special abilities to catch fish, shrimp, and squid. Excellent topic sentence. Let's move on. We have that introduction with the topic sentence. Remember, the hook is not going to be until the end. So what are we going next? Body. We're in the body. First thing you do when you're writing information is you have to figure out what organizer are we going to use in the body. Go back up to the big idea to decide. What am I telling you here? I'm telling you how they're using their special abilities to catch the fish, squid, and shrimp. So when I tell you their special abilities, do they use these special abilities in any order or do they have to stay in order? Oh, when they catch the fish or squid, whatever it may be, 
they do this in a certain order. So this has to be sequenced. So then we know we're going to use our sequencing organizer. How do I know I'm using the sequencing organizer? I went back up and we discussed the big idea. What is this information? What are we talking about? And as we spoke about the information, we decided everything that we need to tell about a dolphin catching a fish, all those details should be in order. Once we know that, then we go to the body, draw two lines. We draw our beginning, middle, end box. We label B with a circle and a half a line. That half a line is where we could put a transition if we decide to do that. Leave the middle blank because that's where we will sequence the middle. And then we will write an E for the end with a half a line. There's our sequence organizer. Before we fill in the sequence organizer, we're going to walk through a process to remind us all the different steps a dolphin goes through to catch their prey. So notice, we're just talking about the ideas. I'm not worried about how I'm gonna break them apart, we're just talking about them. So we're going to say, when a dolphin is hungry, a dolphin first needs to find the fish, so it uses echolocation. It's kind of like a radar that it uses where it makes clicking sounds and it can locate the fish in the water. It swims 45 miles per hour to get to the fish. And finally, when it comes upon, let's say a group of fish, what does it do? It takes its large tail fluke and it slaps that school of fish. And the fish go flying in the air and land back in the water paralyzed. Once they're paralyzed, the dolphin takes its large tail, herds them together, and then scoops them up in their mouth and swallows them, just sucks them down. Those are all the steps the dolphin goes through in order to find the fish, kill them, and eat them. We walk through all the different steps. We just talked about it. The students and I would go back and forth, talk about it. The next step before we label our organizer, though, is this. I'm going to do something I call silent movie time, where we just act out all those steps so we can break them up into their own parts. Sometimes when students talk about something, then you want them to sequence, it's hard for them to see where the different parts are. So when you act it out, they almost can act it out like frames where they can sequence it. So we go to the beginning and we go like this, where the radar is, so. We acted out all the parts. Next, we're ready to label those ideas. Notice I'm saying labeling the ideas. I'm not forming sentences. I'm going back to the middle of my organizer here, and I wanna label it. Here's the next part where students typically get confused when they go to label their organizer. They're not sure what to put in which box. So that's where my hand signal is going to come in to play. This hand signal is gonna show them how to fill in their organizer. Beginning, end, what happened in the middle. This memory device helps them understand how to fill out their organizer, and by filling out the beginning, then filling in the end, they now have the beginning and end done, so then the middle, when they sequence the middle, it's much easier to sequence. Why? because when you sequence, you always know what your end is in order to sequence correctly to get there. Children who end up having difficulty sequencing lose track of the ending and that's why they go off and they don't stay in a sequence. You want to say, here's our beginning, here's our end. How are we getting from here to here? What are the steps in the middle? Much easier to sequence that way. So we talked about the steps, we acted them out, Next, we're ready to label the ideas, not sentences, just the ideas on our organizer. How do we do that? Beginning, end, what happened in the middle. What part are we going to fill in first? What happens in the beginning? The dolphin's going to find its food by using echolocation. So we're going to put the dolphin, I think I'm going to draw a picture of that. Here's our dolphin. So notice I'm just doing the ideas. So the dolphin is using echolocation, which is like a sonar. I think we'll write down echolocation too. And why are they doing this? So they can find the fish in the water. And what will they do when they find it? They'll swim 45 miles per hour to get to those fish. 
So in the beginning, notice I just have the ideas that I'm putting down. I'm not worried about making a sentence. So the students and I are talking. What happened in the beginning? The dolphin had to find the fish and they used their echolocation. They used, which is like a sonar, that's called echolocation, to find the fish and they swim to them and they swim about 45 miles per hour to get to that group of fish or shrimp or squid. Once we put that idea down, we have our beginning. Where are we going to head next? The end. We go to the end and I say to the students, think about the end, act it out. What's happening at the end? Let's look, do we wanna write some key words? Do we wanna draw a picture? What happened at the end? Oh, he's scooping up the fish with his evenly spaced teeth. So I think we'll put some evenly spaced teeth there and here the dolphin is eating all this fish. So we'll say scoops up the fish, eats the fish. So we had in the beginning, he is, the dolphin used its sonar, echolocation, in order to find a group of fish and swam 45 miles per hour to get there. In the end, the dolphin scoops up the fish and eats them. So we have our beginning and our end. How did they go from swimming towards the fish to finally eating. What happened in the middle? So they swam to the fish, then what happened? So in the middle, what did the dolphin do first? He slapped his tail fluke when he got to that group of fish and they went flying in the air and became dazed and paralyzed. What happened second? The dolphin used its large tail fluke to herd the group of fish together. And then at the end, we had the dolphin eat. So how many things happen in the middle? Two. So we write one with a line and two with a line. Let's go back to the first one. What did we say? The dolphin slapped its tail fluke and the fish went flying and became paralyzed, dazed. So we will either write some keywords or draw a picture. So maybe I'll put tail fluke here. Maybe I wanna write keywords this time. And I could put the fish up here and I could say paralyzed. I know that the dolphin used its tail fluke and the fish went flying up in the air and became paralyzed. The next thing that happened, the dolphin used its tail to herd together. So maybe I'm going to just put the tail here. Here's the dolphin's tail. My dolphin looks kind of strange, but that's okay to herd the group together. So the stunned fish were herded together into a group. So I'll put the word herd here too. Herds the group of fish together. And finally at the end, scoops them up. So notice all we did was put the ideas in order using keywords and pictures. The students and I are talking and recording the ideas. Ideas first, you always need to get your ideas down. Once we have the ideas, we need to then start forming sentences, turning these ideas into sentences. How do we do that? We use our tool to start these details to form them into sentences using S light bulb. Sometimes we can begin these details with a definition, but most of the time with S light bulb. What is S light bulb? That's basically your subject, S, and the light bulb is your predicate. What information are you telling about the subject in this sentence, in this detail? So we go back to our beginning here, and we are going to take this information that we see, and we're going to use two fists to form a sentence. Who or what is this beginning information about? The dolphin. What detail are we telling about a dolphin? The dolphin is using sonar or echolocation to find a school of fish. So let's say it again. The dolphin is using sonar or echolocation to find a school of fish. Excellent. To find food. Ooh, I like that even better because it could be squid or shrimp. The dolphin what about the dolphin? What information am I telling you in this detail? The dolphin is using its sonar or echolocation to find food in the ocean. Excellent. So we formed our first sentence. Subject, the dolphin. 
What detail about the big idea am I telling you here? The dolphin is using sonar or echolocation to find its food. The next thing you want to say is, can we expand this detail? Is there anything here that we need to describe? Is there any more information I need to list out about this detail? For instance, do I need to tell why, how, when, where, what else? Do I need to give an example? So when I expand a detail, do I need to describe it, list more, or back it up? A dolphin uses its sonar or echolocation. Why do they use that? To find fish? Where do they use that? So notice I'm going to list more information. Ooh, in the ocean, in the vast ocean. Let's put that there. So I'm listing, I'm giving more information in the vast ocean. So we had our basic information. The dolphin is using its sonar to find the fish. Next, we are expanding on that information. We're going to add some description or tell more information. Why, how, what else? And what we came up was, I think we need to add that it's looking for the fish in the vast ocean. We have our beginning detail. The dolphin uses its sonar or echolocation to find its food in the vast ocean. Shall we start with the transition? I could just say the dolphin. I could use the word the to start my sentence, or I could use a sequence transition. I could let you know when the dolphin does this. So I could say all year long, no. Typically, frequently, no. To begin first, hmm. To begin first, how about we do first? First, it uses its sonar or echolocation to find its food in the vast ocean. Excellent sentence. Let's go to the next sentence in the middle. Again, let's start off with, we have our idea there, so we need to start our sentence. Who or what is this information about? The dolphin. I already said the dolphin here, and I said dolphins up here. What's another way that I could say dolphin? How about we say this mammal, this sea mammal? This sea mammal, what information am I telling you about this sea mammal? This sea mammal slaps its tail fluke on the school of fish, paralyzing them. So the dolphin swam, used its sonar and echolocation to find a large group of fish. Next, what are they gonna do? The dolphin is going to slap its tail fluke on the group of fish so they become paralyzed. So the sea animal slaps its tail fluke on the group of fish or on the prey, ooh, on its prey, so they become paralyzed. Excellent. Who are we talking about? These sea animals slap their tail fluke on their prey so they become paralyzed. Excellent. And I could say, typically, next, then, let's use then. Then these sea animals slap their tail fluke on their prey. And look what I've done, I'm expanding why do they do this? So they become paralyzed. Wow. So I have, then these sea animals slap their tail fluke. Is there anything I need to do more in my expanding? Should I describe when I expand here? Let's slap their powerful tail fluke. I'm going to describe their tail fluke because it's an important part of this information. Then these sea mammals slap their tail flukes on their prey to make them paralyzed. So they become paralyzed, to paralyze them. Notice I keep saying it over and over until I like the sentence. We'll go to the next detail. Who or what are we talking about? The dolphins. Instead of saying dolphins, maybe we could say they. They, what do they do? They round up or they herd the creatures. Ooh, so I'm not going to say prey. I think I'll say creatures. How about I say sea creatures? They, what do they do? Herd up these sea creatures. These, let's expand that. Let's describe these sea creatures. Stunned sea creatures. They herd the stunned sea creatures together into a group. Do I need to have a transition there? For this transition, let's use next. We don't have to use these. We could use other ones. We're gonna use next on this one. Next, they herd the stunned sea creatures together into one large group. Excellent. So into, and I'm going to put group here. 
We have our beginning, our middle actions. Let's look at the final action in our details for the body. Let's write the ending detail here for the body. Who is this detail about? The dolphin. What's this information about the dolphin here at the end? The dolphin scoops up the fish and eats it. All right, let's expand on that. Do I need to draw a list, back it up? Uh, the dolphin scoops up the fish with its evenly spaced teeth. Let's add evenly spaced. The dolphin scoops up the, and I keep saying fish, but we've been saying sea creatures. We, it could be any of these types of animals. So the dolphin, the dolphin picks up these ocean animals with its evenly spaced teeth. We're expanding on this sentence. So we had the basic sentence. The dolphin scoops up the fish to eat them. Then we went back and said, let's add more. Let's expand on this. So we decided to add evenly spaced teeth. The dolphin scoops up these ocean animals with its evenly spaced teeth to eat them. We wrote down that detail. We expanded on that detail. We added a little bit of description and added a little more information. Let's add a transition. Do we need a transition? Again, we could look at our sequencing chart. We could say in the end, finally, up here, I don't see any transitions that would make sense. So we could either have finally in the end or we could come up with our own. So this is the end of their process. Why don't we use in the end? In the end, the dolphin scoops up these ocean animals with its evenly spaced teeth for a tasty meal. Ooh, I think I'll put tasty meal there to make a tasty meal. Excellent. Let's go back and see if we can say all these sentences before we say our conclusion. So notice we're rehearsing and constantly saying our sentence, revising. I can keep expanding sentences as I go back and revise. Let's start from the beginning. Every day out in the coastal regions, dolphins use their special abilities to catch fish, shrimp, and squid. First, the dolphin uses sonar or echolocation to find it's food in the vast ocean. Let's say that again. First, the dolphin uses sonar or echolocation to find its food in the vast ocean. Then these sea mammals slap their powerful tail flukes. I need to keep it in the plural. First, the dolphins use their sonar or echolocation to find their food in the vast ocean. Then these sea mammals slap their tail flukes on their prey to paralyze them. Next, they herd the sea creatures into a large group. In the end, the dolphin uses its evenly spaced teeth to scoop up the ocean animals to make tasty meals. We have all of our information. We have our introduction, our body. Where do we need to head next? Conclusion. And what do we do in the conclusion? Repeat the topic sentence, but use different words using the secret formula S, light bulb. I wanna repeat dolphins down here at the bottom. I could use mammals again. How about if I say these amazing mammals? These amazing mammals, because it is quite amazing what they do. These amazing mammals, what's the big idea? Use their special abilities to catch fish, shrimp, and squid. These amazing mammals use their special abilities, have a clever way, have a unique method. Ooh, let's use that. And we have to catch fish, shrimp, squid. How about we just say to catch their meals? We have all of our information here. Let's go back and say the whole thing. Let's put in our punctuation and then we will plan our hook and snappy ending. Every day near the coastal regions, dolphins use special abilities to catch fish, shrimp, and squid. First, dolphins use sonar or echolocation to find their food in the vast ocean. Then these sea mammals slap their powerful tail flukes on that prey so they become paralyzed. Next, they use their large tail to herd the stunned sea creatures into a group. In the end, the dolphins scoop up these ocean animals with their evenly spaced teeth. These amazing mammals have a unique method to catch their meals. 
Excellent. Let's go back to our manual for our hook and snappy ending ideas. So on the top of this page, I have some ideas for hooks and for snappy endings. What you need your children to do is draw a hook and a snappy ending so they can plan the two on the back of their sheet. Let's go to the next page to see some ways that we did that. Over here we have a hook snappy ending and we started this off with splash. What makes a lot of noise while eating? The answer is dolphins. So what we did here was we started with a riddle. We wanted to pull the reader in with a riddle as well as onomatopoeia, a sound effect. So we used a sound effect and a riddle to pull the reader in. And then we gave the answer to that riddle. Then we went down to the bottom to plan our snappy ending and try to connect it back up to this hook. Splash, oh, we used the same word. Is that a dolphin getting ready to eat? So we asked a, we used our same sound effect and we used the whole idea of making a lot of noise here, but down here we referred to the noise, but we just asked a question if this was the dolphin getting ready to eat. Notice sound effect, riddle. Sound effect, question that refers back to that whole idea of making noise while eating. That's how we're planning our hook and snappy ending on the reverse side, trying to connect them together. Let's look at the bottom here. Here's a different hook for the same paragraph. This hook was, imagine adorable, playful dolphins violently killing. So we started off with a key word, imagine. So that was one of our starter words that we had. And we went into this whole idea of pulling in the reader's emotions, trying to tell them, hey, here's this cute little dolphin and he's killing something. Well, they may be fun loving, but they can also be vicious and crafty when they're hunting. So we're pulling in an emotion and basically this is when we show the opposite. We're, we're trying to point out that a dolphin is fun loving and then pointing out, but it can also be a crafty, vicious hunter. Let's go to the snappy ending. Do you think those fish think the dolphin is adorable and playful or a vicious and crafty hunter? So we're asking a question but the question again is referring up here to that whole idea of opposites when you see these two parts of a dolphin, playful but yet a vicious hunter. Here were two examples of hooks and snappy endings. When you go back to write this out, your students will start with the back side of their paper. They will orally rehearse that hook, flip it over to the front part, read out their whole organizer, then flip it back to get to the snappy ending. So they're basically doing a start with a hook, flip it over, read your whole organizer, flip it back, and then read your snappy ending. They orally rehearse that. When they sound good enough, they will go ahead and write it out. Some of your students may still have trouble with capitals, periods, comma. If that's the case, then you will also want to include the next part of this activity where you will have them take out a pencil and say punctuation time and they will actually put the capitals and the periods on their organizers. Let's put our capitals and periods on our hook and snappy ending while we're on this side of our page. So over here we have splash and that's an emphatic statement so we're putting splash with an exclamation point. What, there's my capital. What makes a lot of noise while sleeping? Question mark. The, capital, answer is dolphins, exclamation point. Notice I'm going through reading and we are putting our capitals and our endings, our stops, question marks, periods, exclamation points on our hooks and snappy ending. Next, turn our paper over and we'll read through our organizer and put our capitals, commas, and stops on the whole organizer. We just finished putting our capitalization and ending marks on our hook and our snappy ending. We turn our paper over. Let's begin with our topic sentence. Every day, ooh, let's write every day. Put our capital there. In the coastal regions, comma, dolphins use their special abilities to catch fish, comma, shrimp, comma, and squid, period. First, 
comma. They use sonar or echolocation to find their food in the vast ocean, period. Then the sea mammals slap their powerful tail flukes to paralyze their prey. Next, they use their tail flukes to herd together the stunned sea creatures into a large group. In the end, the dolphins use their evenly spaced teeth to help scoop up the ocean animals for their tasty meals. These amazing mammals use a unique method to catch their meals. Ooh, let's go back and get rid of tasty meals there. In the end, they use their evenly spaced teeth to scoop up these ocean animals. These amazing mammals use this unique method to catch their meals, period. We have our hook, our snappy ending. We have our entire paragraph. The students now will orally rehearse this over and over and over again. Once I know that they have a control over their language, then they will start writing. Students who still need help or assistance with their language because you can't write unless you can say it, will meet with me and we will rehearse this many times and then I will have them go write. As the students are writing, I highly suggest that they keep talking. So they go back, orally rehearse a couple of sentences when they sound pretty good. Remember, through that rehearsal, they keep changing. Notice how many times we kept changing these sentences until they made sense and they sounded really sophisticated. Once they orally rehearse a sentence, then they go to write it down. When they write it down, they need to keep saying it. So they continue with the fluency, so they continue hearing every word as they write it down and making sure that it makes sense as they write it down. Go back to the organizer, read the next part, write it down and continue talking. I will walk around the room and help students and give them immediate feedback if they're having difficulty or if I notice that they're not putting their capitals, their commas, their periods in place, if they're leaving out words, if their sentences don't make sense, I can catch them right at that moment. And I don't use the paper they're writing on. I always have them go back to their organizer, read that section, then go to their writing to see if they can catch where they were making a mistake. Because my goal when I give feedback is for them to learn how to use their organizer so they can catch their own mistakes. The whole idea here is to walk through students through this process so they have all the elements of good writing on their organizer and ways for them to become more and more independent and in control of this process. They also can count all the different commas, all the different capitals, all the different stops, and then go to their written piece when they're finished to count and make sure that matches the number that they had on their organizer. If it doesn't match, then they can go back and read each part of their organizer and see where they left out those mechanics. This is stage seven, informative explanatory writing using the sequence organizer. The next video is going to be stage seven, informative explanatory writing, but we're going to use the categories organizer. What is it that we had in stage seven that we were adding at this level? The hook, the snappy ending, and we were expanding our sentences so they were becoming even more sophisticated. For more information about the hook and the snappy ending, please go to the informative explanatory tools section of these videos and in your manual. I have an entire section there with all these different ways to make hooks and snappy endings. In that video, I will review all of that methodology so that you have many different techniques and ways for your students to form their own hooks and snappy endings. This is stage seven, informative explanatory writing for sequencing. Please go to the next video for categories. I hope you enjoy it.